We are continuing our discussion of part two, and we're going to do the alkyne portion. And we're starting with acetylene. Yours will start with acetylene. Oh, look at that. He's even calling it. You will start with a different base here. Yes. A different base, I, I promise. You will make the same product. Uh, same product. PKEQ, well, you got to do the acetylene. The acetylene, which is 25. And remember, the other product is this, h 2 c double c h 2 right? What's its pKa? 45. And how did I come up with that? It's the, well, it's the conjugate acid of the base here, right? There's the base. What's the pKa of, of the ones that's a double, that's only a single bond? 50. 50? Alkanes, 50. She asked, what is the pKa of single bonds only CH? Negative 20. This is big time favoring products, and we like this. That means successful reaction. So you've got your anion. That's your new. Your little new. It's got to attack something to put this new group on. This new group, all these carbons are new. So you're going to have that. You like a BR? Yeah. Where do you want to put the BR? Top. Top. I like your answer. No, Good answer. Any halogen? Uh, not fluorine. Uh, she's saying, what can you put there? Any halogen? And I answered, yes, but not fluorine. Fluorine doesn't like leaving. It, it likes being attached to carbon. It's... Okay, so we, that's synthesis. You know I'm excited about that. All right, so next up, we're going to two points. To, I, I can't see this because something's on my screen here. I don't think it's on your screen. Okay, uh, what we have here, oh, if you look at it here, there's an H on the top carbon of the alkyne, and there's a methyl there now. Oh, we're doing another synthesis. What did you do to start your first synthesis? Ladies and gentlemen, it started from the beginning. You had to make a nucleophile first, then react it with a carbon that had a leaving group. I need to make this into the C minus. Please. I mean, you can use the same base if you want. You know it worked the first time. K, C, you can use KH. She said KH. You want the others that would all work? There's only three more. Or one, she said K. Uh, Top screen. K H. Uh, two. How about the one you mentioned earlier, the conjugate base of an alkane? K C H three. That's a strong, strong. That's the strongest base we have in this course. But no, not two. These are all or ones. These are options for one. It's a review, so teachers can do this. All uh, they do all the time. Uh, three more. Three more. Okay. How about? Uh, yeah, K and H2. I like K. I don't know why. You could use NA for those Ks, yes. <laughs> I think those are the three that are going to give a negative PKEQ. Any other base that we know about will not give a good result and will not get points because your reaction doesn't go forward, it goes backwards. Please verify I have the four strongest bases in the course for these four potential answers. Okay, those are the only ones that work. Now, two, you need a carbon that has a leaving group on it and the right number of carbon. CH3Br, sticking with the old Br. That's synthesis right there again. You've done double synthesis. Congratulations. And you really don't have to draw the product. All you need is that word Z to realize there's your two in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five methyls there. Yeah. Oh, is that right? You still put me. Yeah, no, I'm putting, I'm redrawing the product that's listed above it and I didn't do it right. Five methyl, one, two, three, four, five. It's hexene, not heptene. 
There you go. Okay, so that is the product that's listed right above it. You don't get points for drawing things I've already got on the page, okay? What chemicals are gonna take an alkyne that's internal and make it into an internal alkene that's Z? There are two answers that work here. I will give the one that wasn't on the answer key. H2, don't put PT, you'll get an alkane. And if you watch enough videos, you say, you'll also get fired. <laughs> you'll see that reference in the video. H2 and palladium, and, and you get like half credit for that because there's two more pieces. Palladium is part of the catalyst. It's actually embedded on calcium carbonate. And that's what a, a slash like that means. Quite literally, you put it on top of calcium carbonate and push it on there. You don't need the slash. You can, you can list three things and I'm happy. The third thing is the poison. Okay. If you write Lindlar's catalyst in the box, which I've had, that's the, I've had a very, it's a very common answer, and it only gets a half point because you forgot the H2. Students, uh, uh, many students believe that H2 is part of Lindlar's catalyst. They are wrong. There is zero hydrogen in Lindlar's catalyst. So if you forget to put hydrogen, the best you can do is half credit. Okay? You need all four of those, or you can write as promised, or H2. And if you misspell a guy's name, you get no points for it. It's a guy's name Dr. Whitaker's pissed off already. And now you're misspelling his name. Lind Lar. And that doesn't even look like on a fire here. I don't want to get busted by Lind Lar's cat. You can write cat. You know me well enough that every time I say cat, it's catalyst, right? So you can do it that way. There's a third or in green. Or, and it's like, you should choose this one because it's just a lot less writing. You can use, and somebody should make me do this mechanism later. CH3, CH3, CO2H, because I don't think we did it, and it's an easy one. It's a really easy one. You think BH3 is in there, it's going to be awfully hard. It's not. Okay, so that's, that's the two ways of making a Z alkene. Uh, is there any uh, E alkene here? I'd like to point out E alkene is just as good a question. And if it's missing here, I'm putting it because uh, I, I'm going to put it on your test. If you have a combination of sodium metal and NH3, that's a three with a box. I'm trying to get lower. Then what's the, uh, you're gonna copy this here, but what are you gonna change? What small change? It's not gonna be Z when you're done going to be E, move the methyl to the right. So that little picture there, uh, one, two, three, six in a row, methyl, second, last, alkene, second carbon. Got it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, there. there. Just a reminder, E. That's the only way you know how to make E. Somebody's going to have to make me do this mechanism. Because I, I really think I forgot to do that one. I did. And it's not a hard one. Should we do it now? Since I said we, we're going to do both those mechanisms, I think we do them both now. Totally unrelated to a part two question. And I'm just trying to get a little more room here. Here we go. Max. Let's do the BH3 one. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I love coming up with seven. B, H, three, and H, O, carbonyl, C, H, three. And there you go for your edification. All right. Hydroboration. Protonolysis is the name. You'll see it in the textbook. And the hydroboration mechanism is not even new, it's old. You're going to add that one under there? Protonolysis. It's, it's not really new. So, yeah, it's going to be on the test. Proton all lysis. There we go. And this is not new, so I'm not upset. I'm changing this because it'll be like this on your test. If this question's on your test, that won't be BH3 anymore uh, over there because it's still BH3, the original. And I want you to attack the B. Nobody's surprised we're attacking the B, I hope. No. And H coming back. And this one's not a no-brainer. There is no more substitute. There is not a more substituted carbon. So it doesn't matter which carbon you come back to. Just pick one of them. Okay? There's no right or wrong as long as this arrow comes back to one of the carbons. Okay? And you're, ha you're halfway there. You've got your double bond. And you got your methyl and your isoboo. Iso isoboo. And what do you got on there? You got B and H. And it looks like we dumped the H on the carbon with the methyl. And the B here. And side product, I'm going to give you a big clue. Uh, AC. Okay, O, B, H, two. Think you can do it? No. Can you get me to that? A, C, O, B, H, two, and have the second hydrogen on the alkene? Where's the second hydrogen that goes on the alkene coming from? Uh, clue, this is called H-O-A-C. Yeah, well, there's no H on it when you're done. That's where the H comes from. So you take your C-B bond and you protonate it. And that'll put the H on the C and the B will be a cation. What attacks the cation, do you think? Take a wild guess. It's uh, listed as a product. What's attached to the B when you're done? OAC. The O attaches to the B. Can you have an arrow from the sigma bond on O to the B? And here it is. Done. Find in the textbook where it says hydroboration slash protonolysis in the section title. I don't know the section. Somebody could find it for me before the video is over. Maybe. I was asked what section number, and I do not know that information offhand. We're going to do the sodium and ammonia one right beside sodium and ammonia from before. And that is sodium metal and ammonia. Ammonia is the solvent and a chemical. It's a proton source. And when we're done, we get the lovely transalkene or E. This one was Z. V. Yes, I'm going to talk about that. She was asking about an NBS mechanism. 
And there's one mechanism we're actually not going to put on the test, the uh, HBr peroxide one. I'm going to make that comment after we're finished here. We still got work to do on our original video that we started here. This became a hodgepodge, didn't it? What do you call sodium there with a single electron? We have a new name for that. Started in chapter eight, even though this is a chapter seven reaction. Radical, yeah. Elemental sodium is a radical. It's incredibly reactive. Can't buy it. You got to make it and then store it very carefully and then use it right away. And what happens is uh, you can't use an arrow, can you? No. What are you going to use instead? A hook. A habio? A half arrow. <laughs> I thought I was getting a translation there. Okay. Hey, that hook is ending up on one of the carbons of the alkyne. And then you tell me what you think this hook means. What's it going to end up with when it meets up with the other hook? No, the, okay, what's going to happen to the Na is right here. It became Na plus. It lost its electric. It's there for the ride. What about the blue piece? What's going to be on the carbon to the right based solely on the mechanism you're looking at right now? What's on that carbon right there when you're done? A lone pair, two dots, you're both right. And that carbon will have a formal charge as the rules of formal charge indicate. Okay, the other half of the pi goes there. Ah, what's that gonna be? What's gonna be on the carbon to the left? They're not two dots, one dot. Yeah, and we're gonna review formal charges because hey, test one told us we can be able to predict formal charges for both of these. Test one material is relevant on every test. That carbon shares with three bonds. Sharing six is like owning three. And it owns the radical as well. It's not sharing the radical, it owns it. That's four. What's the charge of a carbon radical that has three bonds? It owns four electrons on the periodic table. Carbon owns four electrons as well. What's the charge? When it's the same number, it's zero. Okay. Four and four are the same number. Okay. So carbon down here, it shares six because it has three bonds. That's owning three. It owns both of those. That's five compared to a carbon on the periodic table, which has only four. Yeah, there's your anion, which is the conjugate base of what functional group? Put a proton there. What's the functional group? It's not one of the eight, it's one of our broader functional groups. Alk, ane versus alkene versus alkyne. Which one is it? Alkene, what's the pKa of the alkene when you finish this acid base step? 45. What's the pKa of ammonia? It's an amine basically. It's an amine because it's neutral nitrogen, with a proton on it, it's 40. Yeah, yeah, 45 is gonna go, that 40 will go towards 45 is what I should have said, right? PKA 40 will always go towards PKA equals 45. So what kind of reaction do I have to do right now? Why the heck am I talking about PKA? Acid base, lone pair picks up a proton. Okay, so this first part's the only new part so far. That's it's kind of wild and new. This is not new at all, and I don't think this is going to lose anybody here either. There's a second NA here that you need. Tell me what's going to happen down at that carbon when you put a lone pair on top of an. Sorry, you put a. Radical on top of a radical, which we've done already. You now have a lone pair that has a formal charge of. This is the conjugate base of the final product. Same story as when you put the first proton on. 
conjugate base of an alkene becomes an alkene. So yeah, it's new. And you also made an Na plus when you did this. So if you're keeping score, two Na pluses, two NH2 minuses, right? We never showed any of the NH2 minus. Want to show them? Some people like showing side products. If you forget to show me a side product, you will never be docked points unless I ask for them. Two Na pluses, two NH2 minuses. And most importantly, you made an E alkene. Same. And I think we got to finish some boxes on this one. Uh, my computer's it's uh it's not responding. Needs a moment. I don't know what the green box is for either. You see a green box? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. You just don't see it because I minimized this. Yeah, it goes away when you have a full screen. See, living and learning as we go. Uh, what do we got? We have uh, this guy, and we didn't do TB Sia 2. Oh my goodness, that's hydroboration with a T instead of a instead of an H. Two products. Hey, what do you call an alkyne that's on the middle of a chain? Internal. Now, normally, what would happen is you get Markovnikov addition in the first step. The more electronegative T, which has the same electronegativity as H, on the more substituted carbon, and the less electronegative B added thin to the less substituted carbon. But we don't have substitution in here because it's, it's internal. Half the time the T goes on the top carbon, half the time T goes on the bottom carbon. You're writing two products. Let's do them. Half the time T on the top carbon, half the time T on the bottom carbon. Why? Internal alkyne. And B thia on the other carbon. B with two R groups. But that's an intermediate that we get rid of in the oxidation step number two and replace with OH. And then we realize, oh my goodness, we're still not done. Ah, uh, life's not fair. These are not the final products. You put these on your test, you get half credit because I realize they're very important intermediate. What functional group are they? It is a new functional group that was not on test one or two. They're enol. They do not like being enol. They prefer being what? In this case, ketones. That's right. And the process has got a big fancy name and everything. Now, if I, if I leave those things in the box, you guys are going to say, he's going to give me points for those top ones. And I got to make it clear, you're not getting points for those top ones. You got a T. And where you used to have the carbonyl is where you're... Sorry, your OH is now a carbonyl. Similar story down here. And you get an old carbonyl there, and the T was already here. And I'm, I, guys, I can't make it more clear. You got nothing for this. You got nothing for this. But notice I needed them to get to the end. So, Uh, yeah, you know, I might give you half credit, but if it's not a final product, I reserve the right to give you zero. Okay. Uh, this guy comes from, wow, this is weird. Uh, it comes from over here. Well, good. It's a BT3 this time. That's the same idea as TB SIA2. And this is the same idea as ZOAC is the same as HOAC. Hey. HOAC with BH3. That's the reaction. It's got an isotope replacing H here and a different isotope replacing H here, but these are the three two chemicals, right? Yeah. Well, what happened when uh, what happened when it was BH3 and HOAC? Because it's the same molecule, right? It's the same molecule. 
Uh, we're going to put a, a, a B here and an H there, and then the B becomes an H. But these are going to be TD sin. TD sin. Two points. I should have written two products. Wait, wait, wait. I take it back. I apologize profusely. I apologize. This molecule is not this molecule. Yeah, it's a terminal alkyne. That's why there's only uh, one. I didn't list two products because there aren't two products and I, you know, it's good. This thing's got Markovnikov because one side's less substituted than the other. I want the more electronegative T here and the less electronegative B here and the B gets replaced by D. Okay, first step, there's a C, tri C triple C straight across the top, down to IBU. More electronegative T, less electronegative B gets replaced by a D. Protonolysis. That's the only right result. And what chemical is going to make one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four, five. No. Oh, five carbons in a row with a V on the end. Isn't that ISO? And the total of carbons goes up to six? Yeah. I think I'm just asking how to make a terminal alkyne into an aldehyde. And if we don't understand that al, al is aldehyde. Now, if it was a ketone, how do you think it ends? Own. It's best that you know that, because right? that shows up somewhere else. Yep, <laughs> to the left. Okay, al. So I, I need to keep all the carbons and create an aldehyde. What are my chemicals for that? From a terminal alkyne. Terminal. Is this an acid? No, this is our big mechanism. You're going to have a, 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 a boron on one side, the less substituted side, and a hydrogen on the more substituted side. That's step one. And then you do oxidation to get an enol, and the enol oxidizes to an aldehyde. Or, sorry, tautomerizes to an aldehyde. So tautomerizes Yeah, but I, I just need the chemicals for hydroboration and oxidation in chapter seven. We got to know. So what are the chemicals that let us do hydroboration and oxidation in chapter seven? That it needs a boron. If you give me BH3, you get half credit. This is the one that needs the sec isoamyl for reasons that you're not responsible for, but they're discussed in the book if you're curious. And two, H2. yeah, there you go. And then OH minus. You can put KOH there or NAOH if you want. The ketone one is just to the left of it, isn't it? 5 methyl hexan 2 own right there. I want the I want an OH here. That's the mercury. Chapter 7 mercury is a little different than chapter 6 mercury. Which mercury do you use in chapter 7? Yeah, HgSO4. You can write AQ or water. I do not mind which one you choose. The same thing, and you need a chemical that gets rid of mercury, but it's not a second step. It is all. It was our first version of protonolysis. Instead of down here, we use acetic acid. Uh, this one needs a stronger acid. Uh, stronger acid, not an H minus. Yeah, I have to put H two S O four. I suppose I give it to you if you put hot, but those are the only two I would accept there. And guys, if you're having trouble with remembering chemicals, you do know that most mechanisms are, are on the test, right? 
And when I test you on mechanisms, I give you everything. So if you're forgetting the chemicals for oxymercuration, they might be on the test. Okay. Yeah, they're right here. And you can even see what they do. They're right here, yeah, and you can see what they do. Okay. HB Sia2, followed by peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and hydroxide. So yeah, and I hope that showed up on the video. I don't know. What I did was I went back to the test and looked at question, part four, question one had the uh, mercury chemicals. And part four, question three had the hydroboration chemical. That's all in case it didn't show up on video. Um, I think I want to go here, good. So now we're doing T2. With Lindlar's catalyst, that's Lindlar's catalyst there beside the T2. You're putting two T's on at the same time. It's in addition. So you copy that alkyne straight across. Now an alkene with T's, not H's. It's in addition. And finally, I believe. It's got everything we need here. And there we go. Uh, 